most of the swords that we sell are katana. Katana were worn in civilian clothing, much like I'm wearing here. Hanjuban, like an undershirt, kimono, an obi, or belt, around the kimono, hakama. Swords were carried in the obi, and they were carried edge up, and two of them were worn by samurai. So <clears throat> for the samurai, it was their badge of rank, it was a tactical imperative, um, but they wore two swords. There's modern arts that are derived from samurai arts that do not, but that's a different practice. <clears throat> so katana, as we said, came in various shapes and sizes, various lengths, various handle lengths, uh, different fittings, or koshire, different color of ito and same, depending upon personal preference, primarily. Some swords that aren't a part of Japanese history. One is the so-called ninja sword, the straight square tsuba sword. This is a fantasy thing. Um, number one, if you can imagine yourself being a clandestine operative at that point in time and wearing something that would immediately let everybody know that you were, this was a bad idea in a militaristic society. It's kind of like James Bond. How realistic would that be? It's a lot of fun, but it's not real. It's fantasy. And so is the ninja sword. The reverse curve blade is an anime you know, invention and also had nothing to do with ancient Japan. So, samurai wore two swords. They either wore a tanto or a wagisashi, and they wore a katana. The tanto or wagisashi would go in the obi between the first and second layers, the first being closest to the kimono, of the obi. The tsuba basically sat in front of the navel or just to the right of it. At this point you can see that I'm wearing a wagizashi. Okay. Samurai made a choice, tanto wagizashi, uh, different length of either one. They might have made a choice to wear one or the other depending upon the circumstances they were in and where they might be going. If the short sword and the long sword matched as to their koshuri, etc., or were a matching set that may even have some slightly different uh, koshere or a different shade of color on the ito, but were designed to go together, they were called a daisho. Not every samurai wore daisho because they wore two swords. The long sword, though, goes between the second and third folds of the obi. This was done for several reasons, and one of them is that the sai would not rub together. The short sword is worn about 45 degrees. The long sword is worn basically parallel to the body. Okay. You would not want to wear a long sword this way because you can't walk anywhere. If you've ever had the opportunity to do public demonstrations, etc., you can see how easy it is for the sword to run into other things as it is. So held this way, sometimes moved around a little bit if you're moving. This is how the long sword was worn. You see at this point, the swords do not get in the way of each other if I have to access one or both of them. And there's plenty of techniques where I might access my long sword and then in the moment need to access my short sword at the same time. Some other things that the samurai wore, one would have been a fan. It could have been a fan with iron ribs. Uh, they were used both to keep you cool in the summer. Japan gets very hot and humid. It could also be used as weapons. A tagasode, which is a little uh, bag of, of uh, nice smelling herbs. Okay. Basically, samurai's right guard. Okay. It was something that helped them to smell good. Money was kept in the sleeves. If a samurai said that his sleeves were cold, it meant he didn't have any money. Also the toski was kept in the sleeves. It could be all kinds of things. This happens to be a very nice piece of segeo that Paul Chen made for me. Um, and toski were used to tie back the sleeves. Because the big wide sode, or sleeves, got in the way in a fight. So whenever possible, Samurai would tusky and get their sleeves out of the way. There's the famous story of the duel at Ganryu Island between Sasaki Kojiro and Miyamoto Musashi, where he made a tusky out of paper, 
on his boat ride over. The Toski also had other uses besides tying back the sleeves. It could be removed quickly. The Toski could be used as a hojo cord. Hojo jitsu was a cord tying art that the samurai developed in order to restrain prisoners. Okay, there's a set of handcuffs. Another set of handcuffs. One-handed, if you were holding and restraining somebody, you could start the tie. So many uses. One of the things we do not use the segale for, and many classical arts do not, although some do, is to tie our sai into the obi. Now, this varies with what people are trying to do in their particular art, but for us, a lot of the draws, most of them are drawn by having the sai removed from the blade rather than the blade drawn out from the saya. As you draw the blade out, you can see that you're changing distance in a way to your opponent that makes your arm very vulnerable, okay? It also starts to limit what you can do and you have to turn the saya different ways if you want the sword to change when you're cutting. For us, the saya does most of the drawing and the blade can change in a way that makes it very difficult for your opponent to see. The blade could be drawn straight out to cut kasagiri. It could be drawn straight out kiriage. It could be drawn vertical on either side, all without having to turn the blade to let your opponent know what way it was coming. From the side here, my blade is already in the proper position. It's facing my enemy. All I need to do is get the saya off of it. If I step and drag the blade away, it takes a lot of time, space, and energy. If I, however, let the blade float as I turn, you can just peel the saya off and your blade's already in the proper position. So, segale could be used in many ways other than tying the sword in. And for a lot of older arts, especially ones who use that type of saibiki, the segale was not used to hold the sword in the obi. Samurai could wear an iron fan as well. Okay, the ribs and the sides are of iron. This could be used to block, strike with. Almost everything was used as a tool one way or another by samurai. It was a necessary aspect of survival. Another thing that they frequently wore was called inro. This one actually has tombo or dragonfly and matches the kashira on this particular katana, which has a dragonfly or tombo motif. In Inro, they come apart and various unjins or medicines were carried in them by the samurai. A frequently asked question is why wear period dress when you're doing sword work? Well, there's several reasons. Some of them are movement-wise. People move particular ways because of what they wore. And since movement was the key or foundation of this, to be able to duplicate that movement and understand why they did, you need to put yourself in a similar situation. It's also necessary if you're going to use a Japanese sword the way it was designed and evolved over a very long period of time, that they're carried exactly the way the samurai carried them. So the kimono was Japanese dress. The obi was Japanese dress. The hakama was samurai dress. And this particular thing would be almost like a business suit in one sense. Average people didn't wear it. Samurai would wear it. High class samurai would wear it maybe slightly better. Okay, so the swords are held in by the obi a particular way and that's how your training starts. When you start working and drawing the sword, it has to be held properly. A karate belt is not an adequate belt for sword work, okay? It's not, a, it's not a warrior art in that sense. It's not a samurai art. And those clothes were not made for carrying these tools. The clothes allow you to access the weapons properly, move in the way that we were, they moved, and understand far more fully and train more safely the art that you practice.